Let me introduce you to the man behind, if I can just sort of say it in that all-encompassing way, this really beautiful book. And I've seen some books in my time, but this is a ripper. Kim Illman, how are you? Jeremy, I'm delighted you like the book. Oh, I think it is fantastic. We, we, we normally have, although Angie locks the office, <laughs> and the reason is that uh, sort of people come by and borrow a book. Uh-huh. And you can always tell the really good books because they get borrowed very quickly. Well, hopefully this has been around your office. Well, no, this, is, this has been locked in. <laughs> Absolutely a treasure. Uh, I guess you'd call it a coffee table book, wouldn't you? It is, and uh, I am one of two photographers. My wife, Tonya, is the other half, yeah. and uh, I wrote all the words in there, and she took about 20% of the pics. I took 70 and a further 10% were true joint efforts, which uh, we do some interesting things in terms of our photography. So it's not your stock standard African wildlife book. Mm, no, it certainly isn't. Africa on safari, you call it. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself or, or yourselves. Uh, is this your first book, or is it uh, one in a whole series of them? Uh, first African wildlife book. Uh, I've done a book on Lancelin, which is a picture book, and a book on customer service. I run a business called Messages on Hold. You might have seen our big hands behind the goals at the football for the last 20 years. Well, the company looks after itself beautifully, so it's left us with a, a bit of time to go and pursue some things that I love. Uh, in fact, I'm an Adelaide boy. I spent my first 21 years in Adelaide at Panorama and went to Dawes Road, but moved over to Perth. And then my wife, for the best part of 20 years, had tried to cajole me into going on a safari. And I just thought, oh, what a boring thing that would be doing, bouncing around in a car for all hours of the day. And then one day she just rang the office. Uh, she, oh, she actually works with me, but she wasn't working that day, and said, right, I booked the airfares. We're going. They're non-refundable. You go and book the <laughs> land content. So I was pretty much locked in at that point. I did some research and thought, well, let's not go to South Africa. Let's go further afield to Kenya and Tanzania. And we did that first safari, and pretty much the moment that we saw nine lions on the road in uh, probably the first three hours of our first safari drive, I think I was hooked at that point. And as soon as we got back to Australia after that first trip, I thought, let's go again. So we booked, we were there in eight weeks' time, we got back and we booked another one in seven weeks' time. And over two and a half years, we did 13 trips, went to six countries, stayed in 34 camps, probably took a quarter of a million photos, and um, the end result is this book, Africa on Safari. Well, you should be very proud of it, both of you. So you put the business on hold, the on hold <laughs> business on hold, and you go off and you photograph these wonderful animals. Uh, now, I've got a thousand questions. These, the, the pictures that you've taken seem to be so incredibly close to the animals, and these are wild animals. How did you get so close to them? Well, about halfway through our journey, about six safaris in, uh, I had this idea, let's do a book. Maybe we can get enough great quality photos that we can do a book, but I realised I didn't want it to be like everyone else's, mm. where you take the photos from the top of a safari vehicle. Well, these are, not, these are not long focus lenses. I, can, I, I, I did some <coughs> photography in my day, and I can uh -huh. tell you, these do not look like they are long focus, so you must have been right there in, in amongst the herd. Spot on. You're an astute judge of photographic techniques because uh, we, we do a couple of things. We've got a quadcopter, and we would fly animals, fly it over the top of animals that uh, are okay to do that with, so you get this top-down view. Yeah. Then we've got this remote-controlled buggy built, which carries a, a top-of-the-line DSLR camera, ah. and we would put that outside the vehicle, and we'd drive the vehicle away, our, our safari vehicle, and then we'd just sit and wait, and animals, particularly lions, would just see this thing and go, right, what's that? Can we eat it? Is it a threat? And they'd come up to it. <laughs> Sometimes they'd touch it. Three or four oh. times they took off with it. Um, Brilliant. And Brilliant. once they realised they can't eat it, they put it down. But it allowed us to get a unique angle that's that low angle it's that wide angle where the animal's head looks huge and its body looks yes. small yes yes and uh i i think uh, who was it now was it david attenborough they they came up with these cameras that were uh, inside rocks i've done that fashioned out of tree stumps and yep. all, all kinds of things and that's what you have to do to get yeah. truly different photos you have to get down eye level with an animal and uh, look i had there's one photo in there called the lion selfie, which has been all around the world. And mm. it was such a remarkable thing to be sitting in this car, wet day, put the buggy out. The buggy gets halfway towards this male lion that we wanted to take some photos of. And it started really raining. So we dragged the buggy back, thought we'd just pick it up. But these two sub-adult lions came from nowhere, started sprinting after it. And I couldn't bend down to pick it up and neither could my guide. So as a last resort, 
We drove it underneath a safari vehicle, and mm. then these two sub-adult lions just sat next to us, probably for about a minute or two, three metres from the vehicle. So we grabbed the camera, we put it on a monopod, we hung it outside the car. My hand is outside the car, mm. hanging it down, and this lion gently paws at the camera and the lens. So it looks like the lion is taking a selfie, a true team effort, because I couldn't shudder the thing. Tonya had to shudder it. I just simply held it there and hoped the hell it didn't reach up and scratch me. Yeah, because there's a, a, a leopard here. I think it's a leopard, more or less doing the same thing. It, you know, you'd swear that they know they're being photographed. They look almost like they're posing. Well, I, I don't think that's the case. I think they're just inquisitive animals. And certainly yeah. the front cover with the hippo, that was an amazing thing because we had a different cover lined up. And then on the last trip before we were to publish, uh, I came up with this marvellous photo of both of us did where we put the buggy out and this hippo comes straight up to it and has a look now normally they'll steer clear of it and, and they're never out of the water that's that's really a rarity see them out of the water in the day in great light so everything went right for this cover shot and when you see it as you've already have it's mm. uh, it's different no oh, well you must be very proud of it i'm looking at the picture of the uh, the tree and all of the the lions, lions, the cubs, and I guess they're the females, and they're all in the tree, up and down half a dozen or a dozen branches, and it looks the, the strangest thing. They're just sort of spread eagle on the branches, with their legs hanging down. And Lovely. They, and they go up there to get away from the uh, the flies and to catch a bit of breeze, but this looks just a marvellous behind-the-scenes vision if people want to go to kimilman.com, yeah. and uh, you'll see pictures, a uh, vision of lions, walking with the buggy as it reverses and it really is it's spectacular stuff yeah well i've never seen a book like this i i don't know whether uh, they hand out awards for books and stuff like that but you should be up for something for the the uh, end result that you've produced here well, it's a big wrap no it's a big book <laughs> I mean, you whack four four pieces of wood underneath it and you could have it as a coffee table and a, and and a book as well how did you get the picture of the the uh, the ape's hand and the ape's foot the gorilla, uh, we, I guess it is. It is, is it? a gorilla. It was in Rwanda, and we we did two walks with the gorillas, so you have an hour with them. And um, we were very lucky that we only had ourselves and our guide in the group. Normally, you might have eight people up there, so we could walk around the gorillas. Um, you can only get seven metres from them, but they can come as close as they want to you. So this one just yeah. came up. It lay down next to us, and so virtually I could have reached out and touched it. So I just thought, let's take some really tight shots of its paw, of its uh, feet and, and hands. And you can see, when you look at that photo, the amazing texture in it. It's like it has a finger and a footprint. Yeah. And the one of the uh, the elephant, uh, people are going to have to go into a bookshop and uh, uh, have a look at the book because I, I feel myself uh, uh, uniquely privileged. I mean, I'm looking at the book and you took the pictures, so we're, we, we want to include people in it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but if people, uh, and it's a good time just before Christmas to put out a book like this, I would think. The timing seems to me to be right. It is, and if they go to kimelman.com, if they can't get to a bookstore, I'll have it to them the next day if they're in the metro area. And the other thing is, um, this is the English version. National Geographic have printed a German version, and for a, because we're not full-time photographers. For any photographer to get a National Geographic book is a, is a fair effort. So well, we've been pretty stoked. And now mm -hmm. I think China and uh, Japan are the next two countries that will come on board with a version in their languages. So it's, it's, it's ramping up and it's really quite exciting. And I'm delighted that you're enthused, Jim. Yes, I am. I love the one with the elephant standing on his or hind legs. her hind legs getting up to get a, a bit of extra height <laughs> to grab now, something to eat. Now, there's only one place in the world that you can reliably see that. It's in Zimbabwe. It's called Mana Pools. Mm. And the unique, thing about, the unique thing about that is that you can get out of the vehicle and you can walk with animals. And the last trip we went to Mana, and we were rushed, we were charged by a male lion three times on foot mm. and a female lioness that came out of dust from nowhere where it was chasing another one around uh, after a warthog kill, and it frightened the hell out of us. Boy. You know well, you're alive when that happens. Well, what's next? How do you top that? I, I would think it's fairly difficult to do another book and um, have, a, have it better than the one that you've, uh, you've got here. Well, wildlife, um, look, if this one goes all right, I imagine we might take out 30 photos and put in 30 from the last two trips and another one I'm doing in Chad. Mm. Both of us are going to Chad in February, which uh, is the only place you can really guarantee seeing 500 elephants in a tightly bunched herd. We'll be doing a lot of aerial photography, but... Uh, after that, I'm not sure. I'll just see how this one goes first. Well, congratulations. I, I would think it will be a great success come uh, Christmas time. Kim and Tonya Illman. It's called Africa on Safari, and it's a big coffee table book.
out at the right time of the year. Now, if you love animals, uh, I, I know, and I know people who listen to this program do love animals, I'm sure they'll be in love with this book. Thank you very much, Kim. Pleasure, Jeremy. Cheers. Kim?